Hello, and welcome to the First Issue Club podcast, your very own podcast that covers number one issues each and every week. We're here to talk about comics, review them, rate them, and enjoy them with you here in the podcast club room today. We have me, Budgie King. Me, Greg. And me, Mike Dean. Can I just say, consider yourself lucky. Hmm? Not everyone gets to listen to a podcast about comic books. And here you are getting it straight to your ears for free. Okay? <laughs> Let's not forget the price of admission is zero Dolores. And you know why they get it free? Because of our sponsor, Boulevard Beer. Mm, 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 mm. Tasty suds from all directions. Space Camper, Cosmic IPA. Blast your taste buds into a different atmosphere with Space Camper IPA from Boulevard Brewing Company. <laughs> our favorite beer. Oh, yeah. The only beer in my eyes. <laughs> I only have eyes I've... for brew. The interesting thing is you stopped drinking water once we got the sponsorship and only I'm drink. very sick. <laughs> <laughs> there is water in beer. Don't don't let anybody well, tell you. Well, there has to be. Yeah. It's part of the brewing process. Let's talk about my favorite variant, Omicron. Omicron. <laughs> <laughs> is that a one in twenty-five? Or yeah, that's you come to comic book What's podcasts the ratio on that Omicron? are adjacently funny for them to make Omicron uh, Omicron variant jokes, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my favorite variant, and it'll be fun for you to experience at C two E two. Mike is going to C two E two, and I can't wait to get COVID again. You can tell that Budget King's been off the show for two weeks when he opens up with a COVID joke. <laughs> no, can I tell you one thing I appreciate about C two E two this year? is that you cannot get on the showroom floor if you have not had your initial two vaccination shots. Good. If you are not double vaxxed, or as one, the Canadians or one, say. Or one J&J. Yeah, or one J&J. Um, you don't have to have a booster, but they do go through like a rigorous process. We had to download a whole other app and confirm all our details. As they, they should. Send us a second ticket that gets you on the showroom floor. They were the so, previous super spreader that started it all anyway. So. <laughs> well, we were there. <laughs> we were there. Um, and I think it predated the yes. California it, events. Yeah, that, because like, it was really February. to spread yeah. things. Yeah. There was like one or two confirmed cases. Um, I think... You could consider Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, one of the greatest mass murderers of all time, <laughs> because I think that was the last big blockbuster before COVID like really hit. Really? So like people were out in theaters in droves to see Sonic. Yeah. Um, which, hey, wouldn't have been the case if we didn't care about his teeth. <laughs> his his had, damn teeth. We had the three month delay for the teeth cut. That's and true. no gloves. He had no gloves, remember? Oh, we got rid of the gloves? No, he didn't have oh, gloves. We gave and him then gloves. They added yeah, gloves to hide hand. his deformed hedgehog hands. <laughs> <laughs> he needed gloves, though, let's be honest. Uh, this week, we are covering a spiritual number one Batman 118, which starts a new run yeah. uh, with Williamson. And we have. Uh, I don't know. James Tinian's gone. We're sad to see you go, but yeah, are we happy to see Josh Williamson come? We'll find out here in a little bit. <laughs> yep. We've read some Josh Williamson coming up to this, so I'm, I was excited for this book. I love him. Yeah, um, if you're reading DC books, that's not a name that is new to you. Yeah. yeah. And then we have the new miniseries by Chip Zdarsky uh, about Daredevil called Devil's Run. Rain. Rain. We, rain, sorry. Devil's, devil's Rain, which is a reference to Daredevil's both name and costume. He looks like a devil, if you didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. In our text chain, I think you called this book Ring of Fire, maybe? <laughs> you yeah, did. I did, yes. <laughs> I, maybe. A lot of different names for this book in the budget came Hey, head. you know what? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, got, it's got the word rain in it, so Devil's Rain is what it's called. Um, it has a cool cover. It's like it got a little red wraparound cover, so you'll know it when you see it in your comic book store. Oh, big... yeah, they did this crazy thing with it where they put, like, a logo on it yeah. and some of the title characters. Mm -hmm. You don't see this often in comic books, a but on some of them. Marvel went all out for this. They spared no expense. <laughs> we talked about this before, but December is a trash month uh, where you don't necessarily do big things. <laughs> this is true. Um, well, honestly, you wouldn't know that because there was, like, five or six first issues this week. We covered some in the Patreon. We covered Buckhead. We covered uh, One Star Squadron. And then putting your number one Batman, which is, again, a spiritual number one in December. Interesting call, DC. But they had their hands tied behind their backs. Yeah. They were in 
the James Tinian Punishment Dungeon <laughs> and <laughs> with had, his Substack bet and had no other choice of what to do. I think no one was expecting him to walk away when he walked away. So I, yeah, he this, got a, he got a deal that no that he'd never seen before, so, even though twenty other people got the same deal. I I think it was within his good graces, even that he was like, you know what, I'll see out uh, Fear State, and then I'm gone. I mean, I think he signed a contract to at least get some certain amount of issues out. Do you think? Well, I think so, but at the same time, I think that he was like, sure, I'll hang around to like see out the actual storyline that like I started and want to finish. Yeah. I'll give you two weeks. You can find my replacement. <laughs> when do you wait, turn into Donald Trump? <laughs> I'm not answering any of my emails. I'm very good at emails, uh, responding to them, <laughs> but this time I am not. <laughs> this comic is going to be great. I have changed Batman's real name to Steve Dunson. <laughs> it is now canon. Oh, he should have done some whack shit. He like should have like. Right yeah. before he bailed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Batman is now vegan. Bye, everybody. I've been James Dunyon. <laughs> um, there's a little bit. There's this trickling of news. The news IV is not dry. Greg, what what news do we have before we get into the show? Uh, well, on some sadder news. Uh, oh yeah, it's big sad, sad, sad. It was announced on uh, I think Monday or Tuesday. I texted you guys that on the official uh, George Perez Facebook page, he announced that he has stage three pancreatic cancer and it's an inoperable. And sadly, the doctors gave him six months to a year to live. And I mean, George Perez is a legend, Mm -hmm. an absolute legend in the comic book world. I mean, a ton of your favorite runs and favorite characters he has either done or drawn. And it is such sad news to, um, see such a, a, a giant legend, you know, face this problem and ultimately um, his untimely death. Uh, so it's just some sad news. And on social media, creators and fans really rallied around it and sent their regards and how much they loved him and, uh, you know, posted their favorite stories from him and favorite comics. The quotes are just comics. Awesome. I know. It's like he was such a great, genuine guy. And unfortunately in this uh, industry that maybe kind of, you know, hard to to find or hard to acknowledge. I mean, the good guys don't usually get the limelight for long because it's not, you know, a popular news hit or whatever. But I mean, I'm I'm glad that George Perez is is alive to know that a lot of He's people loved him and appreciated. That's I mean, I think you're in the minority if you don't know someone who's had a cancer diagnosis at this point. Like mm-hmm. it's such a cruel thing and it's so common yeah. and you know sometimes we can take solace in the fact that a lot of times you do know you have mm-hmm. a certain amount of months with somebody to give a sort of victory lap and like say right. goodbye and celebrate their life with them yeah. before they're gone and that's certainly what's happening in his case yeah and how, I- how old is he I don't know for sure, but um, he had had some health issues prior to this. He had suffered from diabetes, and he had, I think, lost vision in one of his eyes. Mm. Um, but he was still doing like commissions and stuff. He had retired from comic books like five or ten years ago. He looked like he was in his late fifties. Yeah, um, and so I had to guess. Uh, not uncommon for this to pop up at this age group, at this age range yeah. for men. Um, but like you said, this is a great time for him to take a victory lap and really enjoy uh, the status that he has created for himself in the comic book world. And I'm I'm hoping that his the, inbox is filled with warm messages from people that he has come in contact with. Anybody and, that has somebody in the comic community signed off with great notes to him, and it has been one of the better moments in comic yeah, book. It's uh, been a really a, a good rallying cry of just like, you know, yeah. this is terrible as this is happening, but you're such an amazing and, and impactful person. Like you will, it, it's great. If I was George and in this position, it's hard to even put yourself there, but like knowing that your legacy will outlive you. Yes. Is kind of like maybe a reassuring thing of just like, I created, I created something that people are going to remember yeah. and my name will live on beyond me. So like it is sad and it is, I can't imagine facing this down uh, in real life, but like uh, take some comfort in knowing that like, you will be remembered. You're like on so many people's comic book Mount Rushmore, George Perez, and here at First Issue Club, it is no different. You are 
loved and revered and respected, and uh, we will herald your name for years to come. Yes, yes, yes. All right, what other news we got? We don't. We have uh, Kevin Feige. Oh, okay. So yeah, we wanted to touch on this because they're doing the uh, news promo and news uh, circuit for the new Spider-Man movie. Yeah. And Kevin Feige, the lovable baseball cap wearing Marvel <laughs> executive uh, producer, he does just have one look. He does have one look. He's kind of like Adam Sandler. He's just like, I'm that rich. I don't give a shit what I wear. <laughs> um, typically, he's I eat pickles pretty. Out of the jar. You yeah, seen that, Adam I have seen that. I don't know if he's uh, working a role, Adam Sandler, for <laughs> a new character he's creating called Pickle Man. How would you do a Pickle Man? But uh, Kevin Feige is doing the rounds of news, and typically he's tight-lipped with uh, like sneak peeks and spoilers for new upcoming Marvel projects. Uh, I don't know if someone has slipped him like a quaalude or something, <laughs> some kind of uh, you know truth serum, but he is just dropping hints and like just talking about any old thing on the news uh, train. He gave <laughs> now this I think this is the most blown out of proportion thing that he said. He said that Charlie Cox is the Daredevil in the MCU. Meaning, like, if Daredevil was to come back, or should come back, Charlie Cox would play him. Who is from the the Netflix TV show. Marvel has, and everyone at the studio, has always famously said, we ain't got shit to do with this stuff. Mm -hmm. That has been, like, the stance. Yeah. Hard. Right. Because Marvel TV and Marvel movies, two different producers, hated each other. Right. And so they were always, like, that was the 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 uh, line in the sand of just, like, your characters are yours, ours are ours, they don't interact. Do you even remember the press conference with Sony where, like, they had an exec from Sony on a meeting with Kevin Feige where they were like, we're collaborating on some stuff. And she was like... We're actually doing a Venom movie, and Venom's going to be in the MCU and Spider-Man and all that universe is just shared now. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, he made this face like, not really. Mm, (laughs) Not so much. (laughs) It was like, kind of just Tom Holland is all we want. Yeah. but um, Because that's what their wet dream was, is for that to happen and- it did not happen. I know Sony was really gearing up for yeah. like that to happen just to help sell some tickets, but <laughs> didn't happen. Um, even still, I think crazy for someone at Marvel to acknowledge that like these pre existing mm-hmm. Netflix things are either one canon, yep, or two that they would like convolute the series by acknowledging those actors as yeah. people who are going to stay. Well, and the thing is, like, people are speculating now, obviously, that Charlie Cox or Daredevil is going to show up in the Spider-Man movies. Right. And I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. Well, the fun the, the fun thing about this or the potential for it is that, like, they're all kind of, like, New York area mm-hmm. or boroughs heroes. Yeah. So I know specifically the Defenders who did the show are all, like, Hell's Kitchen characters. Mm-hmm. And I know... Fans at least love um, the guy who played Matt Murdock. Everyone loves Luke Cage, Jessica Jones. The yep. only person standing on the outside of that is the guy who played Danny Rand. Right. Um, and I I think you'd, you'd probably have controversy if you did try to bring that guy back. Mm-hmm. They did set up in the show that Colleen Wing could take up the mantle of Iron Fist, right. which I think they were like at the tail end there realizing all the bad cultural appropriation stuff they did mm-hmm. that even though it was canon that it was a white guy, you've got a lot of runway here to just be like, why don't we just do the right yeah. thing in 2018? Something new. <laughs> and re- We're doing it. And recast it the way it should have been done. They should have just done that in the first place. Um, so maybe they write that ship and just bring that actress back. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, but well, I don't know. I don't know if I really see any of this stuff happening. He probably was just feeling himself and made an off-the-cuff comment, but who knows. And, like, it, he is the master at... Getting people conversation to, started, yeah. Be, getting people to talk about his properties, yeah. Not he, that Spider Man needed any help 
on the you know hype train. He's, of, the, yeah. he, he's the Donald Trump of the MCU. Yeah, exactly. That that is the exact comparison. I'm sure. Kevin Feige once. <laughs> um, okay, let's keep the train moving. There's a lot of X Men news. We don't have to cover it here. Go to our Twitter account if you want to see all the yeah new new X Men books for 2022. Yeah. There's a ton of them. They're gonna uh, there's too many. They're gonna let Karen Gillan do probably more than they've ever let him do done mm-hmm. in the Marvel universe. So that that'll be good for them. And some of the promo photos, there's just like fun to just look at and mm-hmm. soak in and read into what characters are there, what characters are missing. Yep. That kind of like Last Supper parody cover has Jean's mask and Cyclops's uh eye beam. I did notice that on the on the ground there's like laying uh, on the ground. Yeah. So have they been like kind of ejected from the situation. I know, like, when you're thinking about them, they're definitely, like, altruistic hero types, mm-hmm. whereas we've kind of looked at the Quiet Council in the last couple years as, like, the man and the system and... Oh, sure, yeah. You know, Gene and Cyclops are kind of like, hey, we just want to, like, do good and be one with mankind and bring peace to the earth. Right. So... You might have them doing their hippy dippy shit, <laughs> and the X Men trying to like run a business still. So yeah, that that promo for Immortal, um, Immortal X Men by Mark Brooks, there was so many lot hints of stuff and in stuff it. in there. And we've also got I don't know if um I'm a little behind on my um, Trial of Magneto, I think, but there was a Magneto helmet in the middle of the table, in kind of this vacant spot where like. There was a throne sort of chair. Yeah. Like and the whole thing was like a parody of The Last Supper. Well, and what was on the throne? And the Phoenix Force was engraved in the chair. Was engraved in the chair. And then Magneto's helmet was just sitting in front of it, but Magneto was not there. Yeah. So you know, maybe, Xavier was there, but Magneto wasn't. Maybe he's in the pit at this point. We don't know. The thing I'm most excited about from that promo, promo image is... We're finally going to get some stuff from planet-sized X-Men. Mm-hmm. There was Mars in the back, background. Yeah. And the, like, uh, Araco council members were scattered about. So, like, mm-hmm. that's the kind of shit I wanted to really dive into. Like, what the fuck is happening on yeah. this other planet? Totally. So. The real news here, though, is that <laughs> one of our tweets, this is actually probably why you're here, <laughs> uh, reached over a thousand retweets. Quote, we, quote, quote retweets even, so. Which is even better than a regular retweet. So yeah. we have the magic fire of virility mm. on Twitter. And uh, just follow us into the rest of our episode now. If you're here, welcome. Hi. Good to have you. Yes. Um, so there it is. Let's begin talking about books. And first up, we are going to do Batman 118. Did I say that right? You did yeah. say it right. 118. 118 by Josh Williamson. Uh, starting the new run of Batman, a spiritual number one. We don't often do, not number ones, but this is a first issue in some regards, in most regards. On any other publisher, it would have been a first issue. Yes, True. but DC has lost their mind. They smoke too much crack, <laughs> and they keep legacy numbering good for them. Uh, so we start off with the new Batman, just general takes and big Batman heads, people who have followed the James Tunyon run. Uh-huh. What are just passing thoughts? I've got huge first takes, or like at least... Things that I like about this that I just want to point out right out of the gate. Go. Gotham has been a fucking war zone (laughs) for four years to the point where, like, you imagine this sort of thing happening in a country and you're like, I've got, like, a ballistic area that we cannot even fly over because it's too dangerous. We needed a break from Gotham. Mm Mm-hmm. And a break from Gotham is what we got, and I am so happy. Yes. Like, can there be some peace and solace for, like, a half a minute? And we kind of did the first half of the issue as, like, a celebration of, like, getting past this awful period of time. Mm-hmm. And good nods to Tunyon's run, which was nice. Totally. It yeah. was kind of a celebration of, like, what had just been done and accomplished. Yeah. And just a kind of sigh of relief. Like, one thing I hate is, like... Bane has enslaved everybody, and it becomes this, like, awful, it's like Vietnam and Gotham. And then then the next thing is, like, it's a police state, and, like, immediately, like, everyone in the street is being 
fear gassed and murdered. <laughs> it's just like nonstop disaster one after another where like if it really happened, we might even be like, let's call it a loss and just bomb our own city. Right. Like why do people <laughs> still live in Gotham? And just wipe our hands fucking clean of Gotham. Well, it's funny to me that they're not only living in Gotham, but there's also enough rich people that have a giant party where they want to like come and cosplay villains. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> so part of the like celebration hurrah was that Gotham Gothamite billionaires had a villain theme party and there was a ta- an attack at the villain theme party by villains wherein batman showed up and saved the day and everyone <laughs> there just thought it was like part of the show for the night cuz he was dressed as killer croc right exactly which was a great move yeah totally so that that whole scene was fun and it was also kind of like this was my like last hurrah for a minute where we're just keeping the illusion of peace and we're moving into this phase of Gotham where like they acknowledge street level crime has cleared up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then like these big villains, like we're only having like D list villains attack people and like, they can't really like do the job, do the job out. Right. So Batman's kind of got some time to do some other things, some housekeeping and he's taking care of some, um, mystery going on with Batman Incorporated. Mm-hmm. So which I, if you haven't read Batman Incorporated was kind of this team of worldly superheroes who were like influenced by the Yeah, Batman. exactly right. They were kind of like each individually policing different parts of the world and trying to enforce justice, mm-hmm. but then kind of became a unified um team yeah. underneath this like Batman, Bruce Wayne supported Umbrella. He like helped fund them, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. They took care of business in areas he wasn't able to do so. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, Batman's version of uh, Doctors Without Borders. Sure, there we go. Like you nailed it. Like I have representatives of kind of the Batman identity. It took me a full monologue to say it, and you said it in uh, one <laughs> sentence. I'm I'm just Thanks like Thanks for making me look like It's an more asshole. like it's like the MF Doom things. These are Doom bots out there. Yeah, well, I mean oh, I guess Doctor Doom. Uh no well, MF Doom. MF Doom. And MF Doom? Yes, yeah. MF, MF Doom Doom's got Doom MF bots. Doom bots. Yeah. They both have bots. Like I got rhymes laughing. like dimes. <laughs> um I I think when you write it when you write a new Batman story, you're either like am I going to give the audience Moral quandary, Batman, or a detective Batman, and I think we went more detective Batman. Oh, here. the the whole situation felt very Sherlock Holmes. Do you yeah. guys remember uh, about a month or so ago? I put put you on wise to a new variant for this Batman issue that had. Oh, did you get this abyss on the cover? I don't think I got it. Well, I did it. I got it for like. 15 bucks or something because uh, I was like oh Abyss who's in this new issue is going to be like this great new character dead first issue he's fucking dead in this goddamn issue the hey, funny thing is you know it's like what a t- it's a first appearance though <laughs> but is does it? it matter I don't know if it is it's a first cameo appearance it's a first cameo best. and we don't even know who Abyss is he could be like some jag off the street that was the tease for the next issue was who is this dead guy yeah I he, don't know he probably is not dead and I know then, he's not dead. And you got yourself a, a certified non-stinker. Uh, well, did, if his real identity is from another comic book further on down the line where like he's Jason Todd's oh. friend from issue 29, like then my comic is fucking worthless. Did you get the variant cover where it was the Spider-Man homage? No, so that was the hot one that was going around the uh I got the version of it. Did you really? Oh, wow. I, I pre-ordered it way back. And I got it at like forty percent off. Oh, nice! So I, yeah, good job. The gold. Did you see how much the gold one was going? Oh, for, for? like two hundred bucks or something. Yeah, get wow. out of here with hundreds that. of dollars. I, you know, I love a good DC comic doing an homage to a Marvel comic. So, in that vein, well, they had different colored foil. Yeah, and each different color was its own pricing point. Yes. Yeah, so I got the like normal matte cover. Okay. In a virgin. And yeah. then there was a silver, 
mm-hmm. trade and silver virgin, and then a gold trade and gold virgin. I think nice. And the the like the actual price line for the gold is like five hundred dollars or something. Get the fuck out of here! But I think it it's been selling for around like two two fifty. That shit, like when that happens in comic books, I think like it's being influenced by like crypto culture. Or like NFT culture of just like they want some like kind of one of a kind shit. Exactly, exactly. It's just like it can't go lower. Is was mm-hmm. what their mind is like. It's so rare. Like the printing is like this amount. Like no other person has this. I know that I can sell this at this point. And I just I don't like it. I don't like that kind of mentality in my hobby. Yeah, it's so funny to me that like. I think the Negan Lives image book is a great example of oh, this, yeah. where they did all those different foil logo versions, which I, I they did understand. This, they did it to revive the comic book industry. I, like, this was a gesture. That was a good I thing. understand they gave these books to comic shops for free in order to get people to come in and spend a lot of money in local comic shops. So yeah. props to the Skybound team for doing what they did and – making something fun of a Walking Dead comic that's a huge title. Yeah. In the same respect, you could buy a Negan Lives <laughs> one-shot variant for more money than you could buy a Walking Dead number one in, like, <laughs> mint fucking condition. Like, fuck off with that. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you know the system is I don't is know broken. if that was quite... I think it is the exact case. Is that really? That, yeah. That is nuts. And then we've had this, we had the discussion on last week's... Uh, patreon about how modern comics have created this own scale system of payment and like price of like how much books are actually worth Mm -hmm. that it's just like is it sustainable to keep doing this no well it's not not for fans but unless you try to hide your cash (laughs) i hide my cash all the time it's in every (laughs) mattress in my house now the way to do it and we've said this a million times in the podcast before but the way to do it is buy actual key issues and not jump on the bandwagon of like dumb expensive variants that's such a waste of money in the long run yeah even though we all fall guilty to a to a variant hype every once in a while totally i the last one i did was i spent I think forty five or fifty bucks on a Robin number one variant Ooh. for the flatline first appearance. Mm-hmm. And that book was selling for like twenty dollars like a month later. I should have just waited, but I was like, Flatline's gonna be a huge character. It's and, the new Harley Quinn. And now no one gives a shit. So I finally got my uh, autographed comic uh, version of that. Oh, really? Uh-huh. I, I didn't know you ordered accidentally one. Accidentally bought. <laughs> you accidentally bought. <laughs> did, did they sign it sucker at it the was, bottom? It uh, was back-ordered forever, so I finally got my, my $30 uh, uh, autographed comic. Uh, in, in any case, the last point I want to make for Batman. I'm pretty excited about where this is headed, because Batman Incorporated has been purchased by Lex Luthor. That was fun. Yeah. And so now we have this um, this new twist to, like, the superhero group being purchased by a supervillain. It's uh, it's intriguing, and I'm excited for Joshua Williamson to take off. I think he's he set up a lot of like action. This is a good start to it. Yeah, to, to and the artwork in this was fucking bananas. Yeah, they did a good job of bringing in an artist who was just like holistically different than the previous. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's fun. It felt really fresh and different and new. Yeah, full on geeked. It also was like. Not a full on like departure from Batman, which they could also do, uh-huh. is like done before. Marvel was good at that, where yeah. it just like <laughs> doesn't even feel like the comic anymore. And yeah. it's like you to hit or miss. This is like Batman fans are gonna love it. If you're gonna start new on the series, you got a little catching up to do. Yeah. But you'll you'll be fine and I think it'll be a great run. It and all- and Alfred is still dead. Yeah. I know. We haven't brought Alfred back. Kudos. <laughs> He's going to find a Lazarus pit, some, Lazarus pit somewhere. And I love that if you're a real head, like Batman Incorporated is a fun nod. But I also mm-hmm. think that like if you hadn't read that series, no, you'd probably still have a good time with this. And it's it's an easy enough concept to wrap your mind around. I'm just like, oh, different yeah. Batmans in different countries. They look kind of like Batman. Got it. Totally. You can get that trade in a bargain bin. Mm-hmm. So if, yeah. you, if and, you care, it's a fun thing to go check out. And it's a great read. Yeah. I like that series. 
All right. On to our next book. We have Devil's Reign coming out of the Daredevil series, wherein Kingpin's mayor, or running for mayor at least. He's he's currently mayor, right? He's currently mayor. Running for re-election. Re-election's coming yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, and this is going to be a short-run miniseries. Well, it's like an event book. Okay. So it's like a mini event. You have this main Devil's Reign, yep. and then uh, like three or four different tie-ins for the different superheroes and supervillains that are in the book. And then the repercussions will stand mm-hmm. when we jump back out into our normal ongoing series. And yeah. then they'll be like, we have to call it Civil War Three because it's the same premise of making it illegal to be a superhero. Yeah. Yeah, that was... <laughs> At least they acknowledged it within the comic. Part, yeah. of, part of me was like, okay, we've done this, but I, I appreciate that one of the first people they went to was Tony Stark, and he's like, this has been well-trodden. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. like, I know what to do here. Yeah. But, oh, we didn't mention this is a Chip Zdarsky book, which is already going to make it a good book. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this, this book was really well done and is one of the patented kind of comic books that dips into non-superhero things, like politics probably. Uh-huh. We have Tony Stark who's going to run for mayor, which that may be my favorite part of. <laughs> yeah. I actually did like that aspect of Tony yeah. Stark running for mayor. Of New York. Right. Yeah. He's like, money wins mayoral elections. <laughs> right, yeah. And I've got endless amounts. Yeah, I got buku <laughs> bucks. We're fine. There's also, like, they brought back the Strom wins in the beginning of this. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they're kind of like, we don't know which direction we're leaning. Like, we just love, like, chaos in New York City. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so are we going to back... Fisk again, or are we going to dip out of this mayoral election? We don't really know what they're going to do yet. So. We also have a new iteration of Thunderbolts, um, which are like the hand. So, yeah, I get, this is like a different interpretation of, of Thunderbolts, yeah. though. They're like now Wilson Fisk's like personal police force. Yeah, privatized police. And so the these supervillains who have signed on with Fisk to be in the Thunderbolts now are hunting down the superheroes who are technically under this new law that's been made. They're Break. breaking the law. Yeah. And so they have full reign, haha, to haha, uh bring them in under like uh, pol- uh not, not political charges, but criminal charges. Mm-hmm. Two really great aspects about this Luke Cage kind of emerges as the main character, I feel like. Of the comic book in a weird way, even though it's a Daredevil comic. Well, um, he he kind of takes on the point of like the unofficial like spokesperson of the movement of superheroes right. standing up to this because he's on a cell phone video saying, "We're always going to be superheroes Which no matter what." I just thought it worked really well. It yeah, no, good. totally. I I one hundred percent agree. We haven't seen Luke Cage in a comic book in a while, yeah. uh, like two or three years. So it was nice to see them. You know, and they wrote the character again. They wrote not a shitty Captain America. I like a likable, interesting Captain America, which is hard to do sometimes. Um, yeah. So there was a, a lot going for this comic. Very little not going for it. Um, the Matt Murdock thing gets a little confusing if you haven't been reading Daredevil. That's the only thing I would say if you haven't been up to date on Chip Zdarsky's previous Daredevil run. Um, you might be a little lost in some of the more intimate scenes between Wilson Fisk and his son and like the fake Matt Murdock. <laughs> right. That's running around. And, yeah, Matt Murdock has a twin. And Wilson Fisk is married now to Typhoid Mary. Yeah. And that's all been trodden in the fantastic Daredevil run that Chip Zdarsky uh, did, is no longer doing, but is doing after <laughs> Devil's Reign again. Yeah. And th- so there was that whole thing post- Uh, The Mark Wade run with Daredevil, wherein everyone forgot who Daredevil was. The the entire Chris Samney, Mark Wade run. Mm -hmm. So I think his identity was public knowledge and the children of the Purple Man. Mm -hmm. Right. uh, Changed everybody's mind. Yeah, kind of did this like whole world brainwash thing where... They forgot who he was, and Kingpin is sort of starting to realize, like, my memory's been fucked with, and that makes him even more pissed at Daredevil. Right, because uh, Kingpin always is toting that his will is so strong that 
the effects of the purple man yep. can affect him. I love that they give him a superpower. They give Kingpin a... He's such a strong so, will. <laughs> well, the so uh, the takeaway that I think we're supposed to get at this, at the end of the comic, or the reveal is, is that he's basically bought the purple man from jail. <laughs> Yeah. He found a way to purchase him and have him delivered on site. Uh-huh. And then he basically kills the guy. Uh-huh. And absorbs absorbs his, his power or his planning to have scientists figure out how to absorb his power. I guess like so going forward as mayor, he's just going to be able to like relentlessly unabashedly influence weak-minded people. Right. Well, and now the the the, like the Which shadow. Is, if that's not a commentary on politics, I don't oh, know. Oh, I know, <laughs> Jesus Christ! But the like the shadow rich billionaire group in the beginning now wants him to run for president. Yeah, sure. And so, like that is like a whole new twist on everything. So I, I don't know. It's uh, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I. There's opportunities for it to be way too heavy handed, but. As an initial first issue, that something that just sits on its own, mm-hmm. I loved it, and I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, and it brought a lot of the you know weird, different Hell's Kitchen characters and New Yorkers into it. We right. got some Miles, we got some Peter Parker, um, all that good stuff, and it's got the potential to be a small story while still being this just big sweeping political drama. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a chance it's too big for its own good. Um, but but we'll see. I think the fact that I'm a huge Daredevil head, I'm going to like it no matter what. Right. But I don't know if I can confidently say people who aren't reading Daredevil should pick this up at all. One of my favorite things was when they do, to that point, some asides to like, how does this affect the other universe? And yeah. they have Storm being like, we don't give a shit. Yes. <laughs> uh, fuck off. Yeah. 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 You just try to do something to us. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think I think Chip Zadarsky zips Jesus Christ. I think Chip, Zip Zip Chidarsky. I think Chip Zadarsky is really smart because what Mike just said was, uh, you know, this could get too big too quick and get out of hand. And I think we're led to believe that we know what the stakes are, but these are all New York street level heroes that we've seen so far. And I think that's just what it's gonna focus on in like I don't think it's gonna get any bigger than you know, bleeding into the outer country or world at large of what Wilson Fisk can do. I think it's just going to be like this really intense, you know, political drama that happens within New York. And I think he knows how to keep it just small and localized, but we're led to believe that it may get big. Did you ever find yourself, maybe I'm in the minority here, slightly rooting for Kingpin in this? Never. Rooting for Kingpin? <laughs> But he's a bad guy. He Why is, would you root for a bad guy? I just kind of was like, maybe they turn him out to be like, he's, you know, he could be the political candidate that you want to win. Because, <laughs> I mean, you're kind of like, they give him such a nuancedness that you're like, he's not like, hol- like, like, like Lex Luthor. He's not like holistically just demonic. I think he, I think he is, is, though. You think he is? Okay. I think he is like every strict conservative dad of just like you need to do it my way because I'm right and if you don't you're going to your room with no dinner I'm not saying everything's manipulative right they I feel like they make a point to let you know that he's manipulating people with the decisions that he makes yeah Yeah. and it's not necessarily for the good yeah I just figure he's so overweight that I'm like somebody's got a root for him (laughs) I, I think he's just very big I don't think he's overweight. So well, his head doesn't grow with the rest of his body, so it worries me. <laughs> they, it's they, all tumors. <laughs> oh, God. They at least did a good job with, like, the whole point to be made that, like, when they're superheroes, they bring issues. Had there been no Peter Parker, would there be venom? Would there be carnage? Would there have been mass murders across New York State? Like, no. that None of that stuff would have happened without Spider-Man. Uh, and the... There's a cascading situation and series of different heroes in different cases. Thor brought War of the Realms to New York Mm -hmm. and, like, decimated the city. Right. Like, if I was a New Yorker, I would probably be like, fuck these superheroes. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> Again, why do people still live in New York? Yeah, so they did a good point. They, they made a they made a good stand in the comic of giving the people at least a decent enough rationale to believe in this guy. Yeah, that it's like okay, you've been a crime boss, and we're all kind of aware of like who Wilson Fisk is, mm-hmm. but maybe he's been one of the only people that's dialed into reality that kind of understands what's going to keep our city in check. So yeah. I get, from that perspective, I get that like he's a realistic candidate at least. Well, almost, I mean, it, it almost kind of mirrors how political, uh, you know, people view like foreigners from other countries or into our country race theory. or critical, it's like, you know, they're bringing the bad into our country. Like we need to get rid of them. Like, yeah. And it's just like, it's just so clever what Chip's doing right now that it's, um, I don't know. Like I, it doesn't seem too heavy handed to me where I'm just like, okay, this is like too much of a social commentary on my real life where I can't escape it anymore. It's yeah. like in my hobby. There's a great point. Captain America makes at one situation where they're trying to arrest miles Morales Mm-hmm. For using his superpowers to go into a burning building, right, and rescue people, and he was like, "Well, to this extent, should you arrest me for breaking and entering, for even walking into a burning building, right? <laughs> like, technically, I'm breaking the law." And they were like, "Shit, yeah, we'll arrest you too." Yeah, uh, he, had, I think he had a line in that same uh, scenario where he was just like. If I am going to be arrested for breaking the law for trying to save someone, then you can try to arrest me. But, like, I'm not going to stop saving people. Yeah. And I thought that was great and kind of, like, a really good description of, like, what the superhero mentality is. One of the things I'm glad they hung on to with, like, the kind of end of the last Daredevil arc that led into Devil's Reign was that they didn't just wipe away Daredevil Electra. Right, yeah, she's right there in the mix. She's still kind of trying to hold that mantra of doing good and is wearing the costume mm-hmm. and fighting the good fight. And that was, it's so well received by fans. Yeah. That I think it would have been a bummer to like undo not only the Matt Murdock prison sentence, but also undo all the fun stuff they did with Electra all at once. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad they at least kept some through line and repercussions. Oh, yeah. Into this next series. Ultimately, she's going to go back to being who she is at some point, but I like the fact that she's a daredevil right now. Yeah. Crossover came out this week, and uh, we are going to push it back, our release for it. Did you guys know? It's going to come out this Friday. It's going to come out this Friday, yeah. Every cross talk. It's going to come out next Friday. Episode. Oh, it will come out this Friday. Good call. Yeah. Um, Every cross talk episode that we do has the exact same amount of downloads. So that means that Really? The same amount of people are listening to it. Interesting. So, yeah. That's cool. So one thank, of them is probably Donny Cates. So thank you so much for listening to. You know I emailed him? You did. I did emailed Donny Cates. Did he, did he respond? Not yet. Unsurprisingly. He will. Don't worry. This comic book seemingly was a one punch and i want to analyze it for the multiple punches that it had so i'm glad we're taking a little oh crossover yeah yeah totally for a crossover um but that's the show we had two great books two big books seemingly affecting their universes or not but probably yes i think more so the daredevil book will have bigger repercussions than the batman batman arc that we're in right now Mm -hmm. right i agree so i'm excited for both books same um, I, I trust Josh Williamson because he's had a pretty good track record with DC stuff. Who do you give pick of the week to? Out of those two? Out of those two? No, of the week. Of the week? Personally, uh, it goes to Mark Russell for One Star Squadron. I think he took an unassuming story and made it pretty fantastic. Mike D, who's your pick of the week? Go While down. I did love One Star Squadron, I think Batman 118 is the winner for me. And you? Um, is it the Sonic 2 poster that was just released today? <laughs> the the poster itself? Mm-hmm. Um, I 
don't know. There's somewhere, I and mean, we don't have a great, a, a bad book in them. I, one Star Squadron probably unexpectedly blew me away the most of it, but I felt like Batman was the easiest, most enjoyable read. It was the most accessible out of all the books. Yeah, I but, will agree to that. Which made it just super enjoyable and also was like, I'm excited for this series to keep going. Mm-hmm. So, Which is hard to do after like a legendary run. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was a first appearance today in a Marvel book for the uh, Marvel Voices. Oh, yeah. yes. So um, hopefully you guys got that. Because... Which I believe is the Hispanic Latinx one? I think so. Yeah. And so uh, it's probably... Five hundred dollars now, so hopefully you got it on pre-order, because we all know that Marvel first appearances blow up for whatever reason. This one, I think this one will be easy to get for a while because there were so many covers and so many copies. Yeah, and it's like an anthology book. Yeah, so it's. I think the subtitle was Communidad. Yes, yeah, something like that. Did you guys get it? Did you get the book? Mm-hmm. I bought the Umberto Ramos variant, which I believe has the. New character on the cover. Yeah. On on Hodge? Is that what it is? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Unknown. I haven't read it yet. Or is it so. Eva? I don't even know. I pre-ordered the A cover, and I have that coming. That'll probably be the one that I actually read. <laughs> that I really just get you, all you don't wanna, You don't want to crack the spine of... I like the Humberto Ramos cover, and I think it's cool to have like a first appearance, first cover appearance. Does he still do cons? You know what? He did the Kansas City one like three years ago, so that's probably... I'd love love to meet him and get something signed. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be cool. All right. That's the episode. Thanks for everything. See you next week, or I guess see you on Friday when we talk about Crosstalk. Brush your teeth. Crossover. Bye.